guys, it's Chris, and welcome back to something crazy, odd, but useful. Um, Mr. Jonathan reached out to me and asked me if I could help him with some data recovery. He has a bunch of old SCSI discs here. This one's my Mac drive and it has my toaster drive in it, but I'm just using it for a cradle. If I could get some data off some potentially good hard drives, and he would send me some random bits. So he actually did. 2501, excuse me. XCAD on Amiga format on CD and Amiga Genlock for the 1000 that's gonna be really cool heavy very heavy and a something Media Vision SCSI 2 CD-ROM with this like removable listen to some headphones laptop stuff no power figure it out I was gonna do the easy way which was Take a SCSI card of your choice, this is an Adaptech 2930, hook it up to the old PC, win UAE, run a cable, fire it up, administrator mode, add a drive, Bob's your uncle, drag and drop, if it works. That wasn't happening because my PC has these little PCI Express short slots and no PCI. I guess it's too new, go figure. I have a couple other things, I have my old gateway tower I could use, but then I have to build it with an old version of win UAE, and it would be really crazy because it's like... Windows 95. Anyway, the best solution for me was use the 3000 that's sitting right here. Run a 25 to Centronics 50 cable to this old Apple external case, the drive of which is currently in my tower because it had no hours on it, like a couple hundred, if that. So I stuck a toaster drive in here a long time ago, 120 meg SCSI drive, just to have something in here. Very complex Apple case with a built in light on power supply. Blee blah blah blee blah. This drive is a Fushitsu uh, M2611SA. Apparently it's like 20 or 40 megabytes. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting a data sheet on the drive to figure out A, what jumpers are what. I gotta set some jumpers here because I want to get it booting but I don't want it to be ID0 because that's my 3000 and I need my 3000's OS to get to the network and back all this stuff up. So, welcome back. It's been a little bit. I found a document on the old interwebs. Didn't do nothing. These jumpers are weird. Took two of them off. Didn't change the ID. It's still ID 0. So I just turned it on and it booted Workbench 2.1. It's got all the guy's stuff on here. Luckily, it didn't have... only had one partition. It's 40 megs. Shouldn't be too bad. So what I'm doing is copying all the stuff to my large 18 gigabyte drive on here. I'm naming it what the hard drive is, Fushitsu 2.1 in this case. That way I know it's Workbench 2.1 and I know what drive is on it. My phone keeps beeping. So I'm just going to copy this. It's uh, some personal information. I'm not going to go what's on it, but we're copying the data and that's one crazy way on how to get stuff. Normally I change the ID this is something like 4 or 5 because mine are 0, 1, and 2 on here. Maybe 0, 1. I forget. And that way I can back some stuff up. So luckily I had a couple file managers on different partitions and I'm able to get this backed up. Hopefully it doesn't have any bad sectors. So this is going to take a while. And I got three more drives to go. Next one up is a Mac store with a weirdo plug. And I'll have to look at its jumpers too. So all I'm doing is firing up the old computer computer and getting on the Google machine and uh, typing in the hard drive name and saying jumper settings. This one says 80 MBs. This one, I can tell you what it is that I'm looking at. It's Quantum LP52S. It came in everybody's machine. Common with the 2091s or the GVP 4008 series. Uh, yep, 1.3, 52 megs. I know these jumpers, not to worry on this one. Last drive is a Seagate Seahawk. I have this exact same drive, 32430N. It gives you the jumper settings on here as to do your magic with these things over here. The reason I'm doing this case is I actually had a traditional hard drive external case. When I opened it up, the ribbon cable was snapped off and I don't have anything. So I should take this one out and put it in that case since it's much easier to use and more friendly than this Apple case which is constructed like Fort Knox with January 1990 and it's just complicated to work through exposed power supply not really the safest but I'm okay as a fan too not even dirty look at that hey that's one drive backed up so this is a Seagate 
we're gonna go to ID. Holy crap. Oh boy. We will wait for my family to quit making noise and we'll continue. So I'm gonna isolate this with a data flyer user man user manual. Just set it flat. I don't know what's on this drive or if it even works. We'll see. Turn my Amiga on. Drive dies. Starts up and dies. You can hear it starting up. Come on, I'm resetting my Amiga to initialize the SCSI bus. Start to drive up. Sometimes getting these things running again can actually bring them back to life. You can see the light right here. Come on, baby. Getting better each time. Nada. His head's out of whack. Holy crap. It's really bad vibrating in my hand. But it got I got it to run a little longer. You never know with these drives. It doesn't even initialize. It did it initialize all the way? I don't know. Your mine's validating now. Great. This drive is solid as a rock, so it could be this one. I don't know. Not changed, not changed. SCSI to SD. Okay. Well, that means that, that this doesn't work. It sounds. What in the hell is it vibrating on? I don't know. It's really bad vibration. Not good. Had it running for a little bit. Severe head crash. Hear it? Yep, these are standard jumpers. These are micros. Anyway, let's see what happens to the Quantum. They're usually pretty good drives until they're not. Oh, God. Terminators are still in. Just going to let it be. These do have hard drive lights. I even have an external light for this thing. Here we go. Energize. Let it run for a second. It sounds kind of chunky. Hit it. So, here we go. We're going to go sys prefs. HD. Oops, sys prefs. What are you? Tools. HD toolbox. Scuzzy to device. Listen for a click. Anything. There we go. Drives have been added. Awesome. What do we got? Continue. There we go. Quantum LP52S. ID number four. Perfect. I'm going to save the changes to my whatever drive this is. And, uh, yeah. I need to... I should have ran that again. I need to see what the damn drive is. So, Quantum shows up. Doesn't show up on the desktop. Maybe it's named System also. Don't know. Let's see what the partitions are named. Oh, DH0. And it's bootable. Great. I'm going to make this not bootable. That way it doesn't boot. Mine is not named DH0. Mine is just named System. And there it is. DH0 just showed up. And there. Listen to that. There's the user stuff. Cool. So what I am doing is I'm going to run Opus or Directory Works because it's tiny. I am running Virus Z3 with the 2021 defs in there. 
let's see it was called DH0.1 on well, mine whoops I have a couple directories on here I'm not rooting through anything I'm gonna go to my DH2 what's it called DH1 I don't know what was it dump alright so in here I had Fujitsu and this sent me a new directory uh, quantum if I could spell today LP52S and in there I'm gonna grab the whole enchilada OS everything and copy it to that folder why because that way it's on an SD partition on my SCSI SD I will copy that to the network and I will burn him a thumb drive or a CD or both and try to work on that third drive. I need to get some more information on that Seagate. They're called C crates for a reason. Stupid, uh, stupid video, but that's kind of like a crazy way to back up data. Yes, you can put a SCSI card in WinUAE, run a cable to it, and let it boot your normal Windows operating system. Um, disregard any messages that Windows would say about the drive. Launch WinUAE as administrator add hard drive and you'll see it pop in there as whatever SCSI disk RDB boom and you would be good to go same scenario drag and drop off at least you'd have it on a Windows operating system luckily it's 52 megs it's not like a lot of data it has a 3.9 icon too for workbench 1.3 or is it 2.6 there it goes and that hard drive is backed up cool now I can uh, Reboot, turn my off, turn this hard drive off. That's two. This one has a weird power connector, which is a good thing, I guess, because it's hard to plug this thing in anyway. Yep. Not setting any jumpers, just plugging it in. Something is booting. I don't know which machine is booting. Here we go. This is uh, DH0 also. It's the DH0 day. Yep, got Amiga Forever boot, some utilities, looks like 1.3 ASIM CDFS, bunch of mods and buffers. Cool. That's going to take a little while. So we're not going to watch the data copy, but that's how you kind of rip through hard drives and restore them to newer hard drives that you can then copy to your network and get on a thumbstick and burn them to a CD and get them back to the user so they can have their data back from 30 years ago. And uh, that's how you run a restore on a SCSI disk to an actual Amiga. If you want to see how it's done on a PC, go check out the video that Kevin from Holden Modify, the famous Q, Lightwave Man, go back and look at his history. He recovers said data on a SCSI card I sent him. He had to buy an adapter, just like I will have to buy an adapter. I'll probably get one, or I'll just use one of my older PCs. And that will show you how to do the same thing, but to the actual WinUAE, what I was talking about mounting the drive earlier. Drag all that stuff down into one directory, burn it to a CD, copy it to a thumb drive, and get it back to its user. Funny, you bastard.